everyone and welcome back to another instalment of the video series Teach Me in 10 which is of course part of the Technology Networks group. Here at Teach Me in 10 if you haven't joined us before we're making it easier than ever for you to access complex areas of science and to learn something new because it's where we challenge scientists to come chat to us and present their work or a scientific concept in less than 10 minutes. So before we begin, my name is Lucy Lawrence and I'm the scientific content producer here at Technology Networks and today I'll be joined by Bernard Sagard, COO and Senior Vice President of Manufacturing at Etherna Immunotherapies. Etherna Manufacturing is a specialist CDMO dedicated to RNA manufacture and LNP formulation. Their experienced teams' dedicated facilities and scalable proprietary processes enable them to provide expert support for your project from lab to clinic, drug substance to drug product. And as I'm sure you can tell by the title of this video, we'll be discussing everything you always wanted to know about RNA production and LNP formulation, but we're just too afraid to ask. So without further ado, you're about to watch my interview with Bernard in full. Hi Bernard, how are you? I'm fine, and how are you? I'm really well, thank you. And firstly, I think it's only right that I thank you for taking the time out of your very busy schedule to have a chat with us here today at Teach Me in 10. I'm really excited to have the chance about asking you some questions. So mm -hmm. to start with, because we all know that COVID-19 has made mRNA vaccines of huge interest in general, but what are the typical building blocks of an RNA vaccine? Well, if with the vaccine, it always starts with, with a disease. You mm -hmm. need to have that it needs to be treated. Um, so in, in the case of an infection, you need to have also an understanding of how that infection works. Um, that is that is something that, that you need to understand thoroughly because you need to you need to have a, a protein somewhere that needs to be expressed so that you can have that vaccine function. Um, now once once you have ident identified that that protein that needs to be expressed in in cells you uh you need to build your um your rna strain um and that rna strain has has different sections that needs to be optimized mm -hmm. um that's that's one of the pillars the rna we need you call it rna chemistry uh, another thing is that well the rna strain you need to bring it to certain cells to be expressed so you need a formulation Mm -hmm. um, which is currently in the the, uh, the vaccines, typically uh, LMPs, lipid nanoparticles. Um, and once you have that, well, you need to be able to produce it. Uh, so you need process technology to to make it scalable, to have a good yield, to uh, to get up to an optimized cost. So these are really the, the four pillars that that are needed for uh, for an RNA vaccine. So, what is Athena's key differentiator in this field? Well, we not not that all um, all suppliers of, of platforms have all of those technologies in house, and I think it's very essential to have all of those technologies, saying RNA chemistry formulation and process technology in house, so that all of these people can talk to each other to get to an optimized product. You mentioned RNA chemistry, and can you explain a little bit more about that for everyone watching? Yeah, in the, if you look at an RNA strain, it's composed out of out of different sections. You have you have your capping, you have your uh, three prime and five prime and translated regions. You have your open reading frame. You have your poly A tail. That's the typical structure of a an RNA strain, and you, you need to optimize all of those sections to uh, to get the best expression, um, the get the best stability of your protein in cells. So all of these need to be optimized to get to 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 the best DNA stra uh, RNA strain that you can have. Mm -hmm. And why is formulation so important? Well, that's a, that's a, that's a good question because uh, people do not realize that uh, are we humans are the the um, the enemy of, of RNA. Um, on our skin, on different uh, places in our body, we have RNases, and RNases are, is, is an enzyme that that destroys RNA. So you need to protect the RNA that you want to inject from the human body. Um, and therefore you need a formulation. And that formulation has also the function to bring it to the cells that, that you want to have uh, expressing the, the RNA. Mm -hmm. So and that's why you need that formulation. 
Another, another part of that formulation is also that it needs to protect uh, during stability studies and then during the, the, the shelf life of the product, it needs also to protect the RNA that it doesn't degrade mm -hmm. and that the LMP doesn't degrade. So that's why you need formulation. Perfect. So I'm wondering really, how is RNA produced? Well, um, you always start from uh, a DNA template. It's like in, your, in our body. Um, mm -hmm. You have you have your your nucleus where you have the DNA. From there, the RNA is, is it comes out, and then proteins are are expressed. Now we do it in in production. We do it the same way. We start with with uh, DNA that can be whether um, um, chemically made or um, made by by uh, E. coli, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, when you have plasma DNA, that the first step is then to linearize it. And once you have a linear um, DNA strain, you can you can uh, add enzymes, you can add the building blocks, the uh, nucleotides, the capping reagents, um, um, and you have the different options there. You can you can do it in in one pot and do it the full trans the full um, manufacturing in one go, or you can do a post transcriptional capping, post transcriptional polyadenylation to make the poly A tail. So that's what we call the in vitro transcription reaction. Mm -hmm. That's the first step. It's like in all bi biologic manufacturing that you have your upstream and your downstream. This is the upstream that gives you the crude uh, RNA that then needs to be purified. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, in that purification, you have, you have different possibilities as well uh, from the simple uh, things like um, um, for small scale um, silica purification, but you can do also column purification, um, HPLC purification. There's different possibilities there. Now, our motto in, in, in that production is that, uh, that everything that you don't produce, you don't need to purify. Which means that if you if you can optimize your in vitro uh, in vitro transcription uh, process, where you don't produce things like double stranded RNA, which is a hot topic in the area, um, you don't need to remove it either. So that's where we 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 are focusing a lot on the IVT to um, to and and then. At the second step, um, also optimize the uh, the purification in a single or a multi-step uh, purification process. So, what is the difference between research grade and GMP grade RNA? Well, that's uh, that. Lots of people ask me that question uh, <laughs> because it's 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 not that clear to anybody. But it's actually uh -huh. one of the things that that um, um, explains it. It's also the use of those materials. GMP materials typically used for um, for clinical trials and for commercial. Mm -hmm. um, research grade is more used for uh, or cell based testing or uh, animal based testing. That mm -hmm. that's the high level one. Now um, it also distincts it um, from um, the materials, for instance, that are used. The mm -hmm. level of documentation that is, is provided as well. If we, if we make a research grade man of, uh, products, we will um, record all of the steps of the, of the production, for instance, in, in lab notebooks. And when, for GMP, it's on a batch record that is reviewed afterwards, that has to be approved up front, is reviewed afterwards after filling in by production, by QA, by... So it's a, it's a, a, a lot more, a, a more complex process. Some people say GMP stands for generate more paper. And, and there is kind of a link, link because you need to generate more paper so that everything is traceable and that people even 10 years out from now can have a full understanding of what happened during that production run. Mm -hmm. It makes quite a lot of sense. So finally, how do you get from making research grade material to GMP? Are there steps to take? Uh, yes, there, there are definitely steps to take because you, you cannot go immediately to GMP. Mm. Um, GMP requires um, that your process is, is, is as fixed as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so typically what we do, we, we, we start with, uh, for early discovery or proof of concept studies, we start with small scale manufacturing, not using the final um, um, in vitro transcription process, not using the final um, uh, downstream process, we screen con constructs, we, um, we look which constructs with, with optimized codons and so on have the best expression so that we get to a construct itself that, that gives us the best results. Mm 
a process that gives us the best results. And that's really the early discovery um, proof of concept milligram scale productions. Then we move into, uh, let's say, 100 milligram scale or, or above mm -hmm. scale of productions. And, and that already uses that final process the final construct um, and and we also increase the, the 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 level of documentation for those runs uh, typically then these are our early engineering runs or um, you batches that can be used for non-glp toxic uh, studies or for glp tox studies um, and once we have done those and that process is really fixed we, we feel confident that we can go to gmp we can go to the clean room and we can make the gmp batch that then can be used in a phase one clinical trial mm -hmm. in that gmp area you cannot say that everything is fixed for that early phase uh, material either because if you move to phase two phase three and then commercial there are different requirements that you need to uh, need to go to to be able to um, um, convince regulators actually that your process is stable is uh, um, giving the, the, the results as expected and and that has been and that all of that has been uh, shown in your um, IMPD so that's the whole process that you need to go to from a manufacturing point of view because there's mm -hmm. a whole the preclinical uh, discovery preclinical and clinical stages as well but that's uh, for manufacturing that uh, the process that you need to go to eloquently said thank you so much bernard unfortunately that's all we have time for today but again thanks so much for taking the time to speak with me it's been an absolute pleasure my pleasure as well what a fantastic episode we'll be back soon for another teach me in 10 so keep your eyes peeled and i hope i'll see you again soon Thank you.